Well, yeah. So look, um, I, I'm actually um, maybe foolishly I'm presenting a um, a very uh, early stages of a project that I'm, I'm working on, uh, and I just want to talk about the, the sort of retopology and and the sort of development of this this project. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a render. So yeah, so this is it. So it's basically a a, a crab, a three D crab. It's a fiddler crab, and it's going to have a relationship with this um, like a, an old sort of post at the beach. And um, I've just been working. It's a shamanic fiddler crab. So it's a crazy, crazy little crab with lots of colours. Um, and it's a long backstory to this, but in essence, you know, we've just been trying to get it up to to the, the first stages. I just want to go through some of the steps involved in that. Um, and so I yeah, started off uh, with some very basic ideas. I'll show you some pictures of what fiddler crabs look like if, in case no one really knows what they are, but they're quite small. They're only like um, five, 10 centimeters wide. And I'll show you the reference. So they're incredibly brightly colored uh, with these beautiful, and one claw is, is bigger than the other. This is the, the, the main sort of thing about fiddler crabs. Um, one incredibly enormous claw and a smaller sort of claw. So when they feed themselves, when they eat, they use a small claw to sort of scoop up stuff this large claw in the, waving in the uh, in the breeze and they had this large claw which then attracts the females and so they do this incredibly um strange dance um the fiddler crab dance so anyway this is this is the background but they had these bright sort of colors um and this this incredibly um bright exoskeleton and quite beautiful things quite strange things so anyway so um i started out with just downloading a few bits and pieces from uh, from around around the net of uh, just in general crabs and I sort of thought well I'll try a sculpt in blender but um, which was okay um, and just using some reference images uh, etc and it was sort of getting there but um, it wasn't quite getting the sharpness that I wanted it wasn't quite wasn't quite happy with it and so I, um, I looked around for a 3D scan. I was going to have to retopologize this anyway, because this is you know, very, um, very dense uh, with, with the Blender Sculpt. I was going to have to retopologize it. So I thought I may as well start with a, a real scan, if I could find one, uh, and then do the retopology after that. The Sculpt just wasn't happening for some reason. I don't think I was really that comfortable with Blender Sculpting. I haven't done too much. Um, and so, yeah, I found one, uh, like a 3D printing site, Fiddler Crab, and it was really, really nice, very high res and beautiful. I'll show you what that looks like uh, initially. Oops. So this this was the crab. I, I imported it into Blender and, and, and resized it, etc., and cut it all into small little sections. Um, very very nice, very realistic. I wasn't actually quite after the the totally realistic look, but uh, quite a realistic um, uh, scan. Uh, and of course, being a scan, it's incredibly dense um, dense mesh, so quite sort of, um, not useless for me, but not quite workable and so to start this off I, I did a lot of research about um, uh, retopology and, and I've actually got the retopo flow um, add-on for blender which is really nice but it was going to take uh, a lot of time to get in here especially the body the body was the, the thing I wasn't quite sure about with these sort of sections um, these little jointed sections where the, where the legs meet the body that was quite odd um, so anyway, my research found me to, or led me to here, which is the Instant Meshes uh, program. So it's um, from SIGGRAPH paper a few years ago, and they've released it as a um, an open source uh, software called Instant Meshes, and it was amazing. It was it was everything that I wanted it um, that, that I needed in, in this stage. So look, I'll load that up. I'll show you what it is. It's a very small, just three meg for the program. Uh, and I'll open the mesh. So here's just the just the body section, yeah. Because I mean the, the legs weren't aren't going to be that hard. These aren't sort of too difficult, I don't think. This is a bit bit gnarly in here. But yeah, the body was a thing that sort of bothered me a little bit to try and because I didn't really understand the um, the structure of the crab when I began. And so anyway, um, we, we bring it in. Uh, there's just a, a, about three or four sort of step process. And so firstly, I'll choose the roughly how many faces I, I want. We do the initial sole, and it gives me all these uh, these curves and the lines of, of how it's what what's it, what it's going to do, the job it's going to do for this retopology. So the next step is to actually solve it, and that's what it's going to do to the mesh. Okay, so it's not too too bad to begin with, but it's a bit strange 
around here. And really the, the primary reason for, or, or the, the motivation for the project is to animate the crab and to have it in a game engine. So I, I wanted it to be as low as possible, low res as possible. And these are going to be quite, um, uh, there's going to be quite a lot of motion in these areas. So yeah, the thing that was, was quite amazing about this package was um, I go into this function, which is the um, orientation comb. And now I can, if I solve this again, sorry. And now when I'm in this function, I can draw lines of how I want the topology to change. So you see around in this area with this curves to the shell, I can draw a curved line and it will update and make this curve in the mesh for where I want it to be. So I'll just sort of do a few of these now and show you. So I gradually go in, oops, follow the lines and the curves of the, the mesh. I'm going to try and do as good a job as it can. And certainly around these areas. Oh, that's a bit wonky. And around this shell as well. So just spending, you know, just a few minutes to try and get this, um, this flow happening around there. It's looking sort of good. You got a question from YouTube. It's is instant message it is instant message meshes FOS. Yes, FOS. It's free. It's downloadable. It's it's, it's a research application. So I, I think it's uh, open source. I'm not sure what the license would be. If that's the question. Cool. So anyway, you sort of get the idea. And so I can you know great, refine this, refine this, and comb it. And now if I do a solve, get out of that mode, it will have updated some of some of this a little bit. Okay, that's cool. And then if I say export mesh and extract, okay. And so this is really what I wanted, a really nice basic mesh to start off with. I was going to do just the, the cleanup in, uh, in Blender. That's good. Um, so, and I think I actually want it to be like less than a thousand to begin with, just to sort of see as I solve. Yeah, I, I think it, maybe it would have gone like maybe 1200, a little bit more than that. But I yeah, wanted something quite low res just to get this basic sort of shape. Um, and so I'll show you what the, the initial one looked like in Blender. But yeah, it's quite just like two or three steps and it does really quite a nice job. I'll come back to this in a second with, with the second round of this free topology. But um, I found that to be quite easy um, to go from this one to then. Yeah, here is the, the original sculpt, uh, you know, which, which I don't really need anymore. That was the starting point. It wasn't quite satisfactory. And this was the first mesh from um, Instant Meshes. So a little bit messy. Now there's a few, uh, a few sort of wonky sort of bits in there. It didn't quite do these at all. So that was much too low res, but it was a nice, nice starting point. This was the second one that came in. Uh, I spent a lot of time in there painting uh, or orienting the, the, the curves. Um, that came out quite well. A lot of yeah, weird stuff where the, um, where the eyes sort of need in this sort of jointed area. But it gave me a, a nice structure for this, for the way that where the, the legs join the body. And then I just went in and just started cleaning up. You know, I just made these a little bit more um, uh, official, I, I suppose. Um, getting this nice pattern around the, the shell, etc. So it didn't take sort of too long. And just trying to get rid of a few of the triangles if I could, uh, a few of the endgons, um, and trying to make this sort of section, the mouth section, um, a bit more uh, enhanced. And, and certainly to make, to curve this around. So it's gonna be a little bit stylized. It'll be a bit more stylized than this, but I didn't want it to be too, too scanned and realistic. But. So yeah, so I mean, that was the process for that. And so I, I kept sort of going as well with them. Um, I made very rough versions of the, of the legs. I didn't really feel the need to, um, to re apologize the legs that much. I did a, just a, a very rough pass just to give me a basic sort of mesh. And then I just deleted the, the scan. I didn't need the scan really after that. And I made some very rough legs and sort of pretty much placed them on top. Um, but yeah, that was just a, a the, brought the whole thing into instant meshes, uh, chose the, uh, the, the, the face level, how many faces I wanted. And that was my working model, um, which was cool. 
And then, yeah, just made a bunch of basic uh, legs. Let's get rid of those. Just using some really rough shapes. Um, I think it was even, yeah, very, very low res. And they're, they're more than enough. It's, that's, that's fine. And so, yeah, so I'll load up the, sort of what it became. Um, and really, it was a matter of just placing them in the, 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 the sort of sockets and then trying to work on the rig, how to sort of put this all together with some sort of, yeah, some sense of the, the crabness of it, you know. Um, and so this is the next step. So I've got the, the finished, uh, retopologized version of the crab. Uh, I'll put the wire on with a subsurface on there. That should be good. Okay, so it's cool, it's good. And I've started to do the mouth joints and the mouth parts. That's gonna be a, a, quite a weird part to rig. They're like an alien versus predator sort of thing. The way that these crabs eat is quite, uh, <laughs> quite otherworldly and alien, but you know, it's, it's very strange. Yeah, and so these, these are good. And so then I've added the, the, cra the claw and I just manually did this. I had the, the basic uh, shape of the, the other claw and just manually constructed that. And now, and let me get the other ones made one of those legs and duplicated it a few times. So it fits in with, with the body. Yeah. So really, yeah, rather than a, uh, a straight retopology of the, the original scan, it's more of an interpretation, I think. And it'll be more and more so as I progress it through. Yeah, so put this together so we can sort of move this around. There, it's one sort of rig for each leg. Uh, and this is just a, um, a sort of look at controller for the, um, for the IK. And they're all separate objects, all, all separate rigs. And they all sort of share like a, 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 um, a child of constraint with this main body, uh, the, the body sort of bone. So they can all sort of join together uh, like this. Master control also controls them all. And I've just, just started doing the, um, the rig for the, the main claw and the little tiny weird claw in there. And you've got, again, so yeah, the next step is to do this weird sort of mouth part motion where, when it does its eating. I've made a small sort of rigs with the oops, with the eyes. Not sure how they're going to operate now because it's a, um, a stylized sort of, maybe not cartoony, but a very heavily stylized crab. So I'm not sure how they're going to respond. Um, they're going to. It, it needs a lot of life in there um, and to look around. So it's going to have to be rotation and positions and you're going to be quite a flexible little, um, little, little things. I'm not sure how they're going to work. So, you know, have to do some animation tests to, um, to see where that's sort of heading. And cool. And so that was good. That was the next sort of step. So the retopology happened. That was good. Um, made a, 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 the first sort of rig, which is, is quite working quite well. Um, and then I put it into um, the substance painter just to get an idea of what's sort of um, what's going on I unwrapped these guys um, I think there's just one scene on each uh, each sort of part um, there we go I think that's down down the middle here on the other one it's just one seam down the middle uh, and show what that looks like they all unwrapped quite quite easily I've got to say uh, I think I spent a bit of time in the um, And the main body to try and sort of get it to be quite a nice layout. Yeah, so it's, it, you know, that works quite well. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, so I'll load it up in the Substance Painter. Because, yeah, it's, um, and I'm, I really hadn't used Substance Painter much at all before. Um, it was quite a steep learning curve, but I want to try and get these amazing colors of these guys so there's sort of blues and there's reds and there's greens there's purples there's every color in the rainbow with these these beautiful um claws they have um they're quite luminescent they've got a lot of translucence and subsurface scattering through this this shell of theirs there's a lot of hair which i, I don't really want to do the hair but there's a lot of detail a lot of patterns in these guys it's just beautiful and so this was just the first sort of steps towards this. So I think I added just like a, a machinery uh, thing to begin with, uh, which is some grunge and, and um, some dirt and grime, etc. And then started to just play around with some adding some blue. 
blueness to it um, to try and get some color, but I haven't really progressed very far with some still with, with the, the hard learning curves of substance. It's quite an exciting thing, but um, yeah, it's, it's a, a bit of a different way to look, way to work, but quite incredible. Um, yeah, so that's sort of the start of him. And that's going to be a much longer uh, process to get to, um, to those colors, um, uh, those colored images. Um, yeah, so that's sort of where it's um, uh, going to now. Um, I'll show you that render again. And so I'll talk about, I did the, the post, I actually did the scanning for this post. I've, I've made a, like a small sort of scanning setup um, in my studio. And it's the same sort of issue where it comes in at an incredibly high resolution. Um, and I'm using like a photogrammetry setup just with um, uh, PhotoScan, Edgesoft PhotoScan. Mm. And these were the images that I took. So I had it with a small green screen at the back and took, uh, I think, 24 shots at the bottom and 24 shots at, at in the mid. And 24 shots, had a little, like a little turntable at the bottom. And these are just some old posts from, from where I live. We had a, a really old fence line, uh, which was rotten and, and fallen down with wire and, and this really beautiful weathered wood. So I've got quite a collection of these things. And so, yeah, this is, this is one of the, the, the first sort of tests of these. Um, Posts and then I put that into After Effects and took the green screen out, keyed it out, uh, color corrected a little bit, not much. PhotoScan seems to really like it if you, you matte out the background, so it's just a pure, pure um, uh, image. Uh, and then, yeah, and there, then here it is. So, photos, photo, uh, PhotoScan, sorry, um, uh, combines all the cameras and exports a mesh and gives me the nice texture as well. Uh, it's a bit too harsh. So really large texture and a very, very uh, a dense, um, dense mesh. So I've found that the, yeah, I'll show you what that is. So incredibly dense, but a really nice texture. Um, which is strange though, it comes in as a, a million little pieces. So lots of long strips of this texture to come in, with these little bits and pieces there. So when I retopologize this one, I will um, use instant meshes, make a, a lower res version of it, and then I'll do a bake. So I'll bake from this higher res version to the lower res version, um, using just the basic blender cycles, uh, baking down the bottom, I found that to be Fantastic in the, in the, in the past. Um, and yeah, and the, the second one was, there's a lot more detail in this one. And it, it the, the original idea was to have a really small crab, like say this size on these really large posts. Um, and I'll be able to go between make uh, shooting on the real post and shooting on the um, or do, you know, doing a virtual copy and doing the, the same shot in Blender. But the scan's not really up to getting that close in. It's, it's, it's great, but you can see it's quite sort of smoothed and curved um, in here. There's just not enough detail that close up, I don't think. Uh, and in my, my render, uh, it's from a certain angle. So you can see that there's a little bit of smoothness around here. It's not quite up to it. Uh, and this is where the little texture lines that are appearing as well. There's some sort of little errors in the, in the, um, where those textures are joined together. And so I sort of tried to hide it by having the sun come from one side. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see the smoothness coming through there. It just doesn't quite work. But yeah, I tried to sort of uh, conveniently hide that one. And there's crabbing with the, the unit. Yeah, so that's the second sort of post. So that's you know, the rich apologies coming for that. Um, and instant meshes will be okay, but I, I'm not sure. I think I'll do a combination of uh, combining, just doing it by hand, I think, in some of the places that I really want Crabby, the, the Crab project, the Crab guy to be. So this little section is gonna be a little sort of playground for him. He'll do a lot of, lot of um, there's quite a few scenes with him in this section. 
So I might just focus on one section as a close-up and retopologize that quite heavily, and the rest do you know the automatic um, retopology for for the rest. I just um, I'm pretty scared about trying to get into these sort of areas. That's going to take yeah a long time. But anyway, but that's the that's the goal. Um, and so um, I also to put these two things together, I'll load up the file which has got the oh, that's them together. Once again, you can see where these texture, I actually don't know how to fix this up at the moment, these, where these texture seams come in, where those little uh, strips. Oops. Could that be some sort of like bleed or something like that? I, I don't know, I, I, I haven't, yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure what it is. Where it joins it together, there's like a one pixel. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's really annoying. I. I um, yeah, I can tell you what we've done in the past oh, yeah. when this something yeah. happens. Um, we'll take this into Photoshop or something like that, duplicate it, blur it, a couple of like blur it, and then just kind of uh, put it on top of itself. So you get this nice bleed of a yeah. color, and then, it goes over this these lines. Yeah, and that's that's what we've done. I've seen this happen a lot. You you just gotta basically duplicate it and blur it and put it underneath, and you get this nice bleed of a color. Yeah, and that, okay. that solved a lot of problems for us in the past. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and so I, uh, I looked online for a, um, a PBR workflow in Blender. And this one actually hasn't quite worked. It, it's, it's fine, but um, I'm not sure about the normal sort of setup in here. Uh, I think that's... I, I don't know where I got this from, but this was an awesome little add-on um, to say, rather than, because I was exporting all these maps and textures and, and going back and forward all the time, it was quite tedious. And so I've got this add-on, which is um, add a set of images. So it will look for, when I export from Substance, and here is my, uh, I, I've made quite a few texture sets for some reason, I'm not sure if I was supposed to, but um, you know, we, there's a lot of textures that come out of this. Um, and when I go back into Blender, if I say texture, add a set of images, it'll look for the first one, just the base color or the body or the eye or whatever, look for just the base color and then it'll add each, each of those in that, in that set, um, which is a, a great help. And yeah, I'm not sure where I found this one from, but it was um, a PBR shader, which works quite well. I was still a bit sort of confused about the um, combining the normal with the height. So I'm not sure whether I actually need to use the height in this, but anyway, this sort of seems to work quite well. And um, yeah, and so that's sort of really the crappy project at the moment. Um, I'll, I'll sort of show you where it came from. It's um, it's taken a, a couple of years. I was doing a lot of these projects with eye, eyeballs and these weird sort of eyes in in um, in, in space. Uh, and his eyeball tunnels. So I'll show you an example. I don't know why I was doing it, um, but you know, I was playing around and, and that, was, um, that was great. I was doing these sorts of things, these natural sort of shapes and patterns and these weird sort of things with these eyes. Um, and eyes, eyes, once again, it was always about eyeballs. And I was trying to um, get this enormous, enormous tunnel of these, these blinking eyes and things. And I don't, didn't really know why, what, what I was doing it for. And then I made these sort of freaky eyeball tunnel sort of type things. Um, and it sort of gradually progressed and progressed and progressed. Uh, and then I had this sort of experience last year and, and I realized it was a, 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 a crab. A crab was the sort of creature I was trying to get to. And I couldn't work out why this sort of tunnel was, um, was still happening. And so I realized that when the crab does his little shaman sort of routine, he, he meets this post, he does the shaman routine, and when his mouth opens, that's when the, um, that's where the tunnel is going to be. We're going to fly into the, the mind of the crab, <laughs> kind of become the crab, and um, yeah, that's where the tunnel is going to occur. So uh, yeah, but that's, that's an another, <laughs> another, uh, another day. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the project, I think, um, sort of PBR. And it actually came from these animations that I was doing using uh, real wood, real stop motion armatures, uh, these sort of dark creatures. Um, 
and they were sort of sculptures, but they were armatures, they were animated, uh, etc. They were these sort of quite strange um, things. They evolved into this this next sort of creature um, using. I, I scanned all those armatures. I scanned the bits of wood. And I put them together into this sort of tripod like sort of creature sort of thing. They, they were really quite beautiful. I didn't know where they were going once again. I, I, they were very difficult to animate, so I thought I'd put it into 3D. I wasn't quite sure. Um, and then that evolved with the, eye, the eyeballs combined with this one to make the, the crab. So, yeah, he's going to be quite a stylized guy in the future. But that's where they come from. And. And I think that's sort of getting pretty much it. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, are there any questions from anyone, or um, how? What are we going for time? Ah, uh, you know what? Let's let's take a quick look. Um, I know someone was mentioning Solidify uh, as a tool to potentially use. <clears throat> Solidify oh, yeah, for for the scanning. Yeah, and uh, it looks like also there's a Solidify Photoshop filter that will stretch out pixels. That seems to be. Oh, uh, I, I see what you mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be something. So I found that when when I did the um, yeah, last time I, I when I retopologized or oh, sorry, um, yeah, retopoed those uh, tripped little bits. When I yeah. baked the texture, it still had those small little seams, which was really annoying. From this view, you can't see it, but zooming in and, and we can. But yeah, I'd love to know uh, how to fix that. That would be great. Yeah. So that seems to be one thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah that's cool. The, the blue one sounds good. Yeah, I want to talk a little, I'll, I'll ask a couple of questions here, actually. I'm yeah, a little awesome. curious about stuff. Um, so it seems like this was a really organic process when you kind of built the whole thing out. Now that you've gone through this whole photogametry thing, what, what would you tell us, but what would you tell us to not do? What mistakes maybe did you run into in this whole process? I, I think the photography, it took a long time to work out a process to get it to be, um, the right number of photos when I took the uh, the, the, um, the pictures, and I did it inside a studio. Um, I think that was probably the um, to make it as clean and clean and clean as possible um, with the same lighting, you know. So yeah, I, I sort of started to do things outside and taking random photos. I just became more and more methodical with it. So now I know exactly how long it'll take, pretty much. Uh, I was doing small sticks this size. They were they were okay. This one's quite a lot bigger, so three feet long. Um, yeah, it became just more methodical, much much more methodical, um, and and just did it over and over and over and over again. Um, and that was the thing that yeah, I, I really sort of um, worked with. And then yeah, the, the the this this instant meshes was a really nice sort of um, addition. I, at first, I started to just. You know, do it by hand. I realized that would take hours. That was silly. It wasn't, I, I could do it, but it would just take too long. Uh, Retopper flow was really good, but once I got into these little hairy little bits, uh, sort of in amongst here, it, it yeah, it, it was taking a bit too long. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so this thing incredibly methodical. Um, I don't think there was anything, any one part of um, photo scan that was strange. Um, but yeah, just the, the incredibly high res source footage was there. Another question that I've got from the chat is what kind of camera and lenses did you use? And maybe while on top of that too, um, how did you light the whole thing? Oh, uh, actually I don't have a picture of that. It's, um, oh, it's a shame. If I was in the studio, I could, I could show the, the, uh, the setup. So it's a, a Canon uh, 5D Mark III. Uh, and I had just, I think two, two lights, two, um, um, uh, so quite large sort of with, uh, lights with diffusers, so two sort of light boxes basically, um, with some fluorescent lights overhead. So very simple lighting, but because it's an enclosed space, there was no other light coming in. Um, so Canon 5D, uh, I had through actually Dragon Frame. I, I made a um, uh, an automated little turntable as well, and so Dragon Frame is like a stop motion program, uh, and I can sort of just take a series of images. It will do it automatically for me. But uh, yeah, Dragon Frame, a Canon 5D. <laughs> Um, and two sort of softbox lights, uh, and that's it, pretty much. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. And then, um, actually, I've, I've got another kind of like follow up from my my own point of view. Can you yeah. talk a little bit more about like retopologizing and instant meshes and everything? Um, is is this a tool you think you would use a lot? Is there 
Is there any I, I think vendor so. equivalent? You know, just, I'm, I'm just, I've I, never seen it before, so it looks great. No, I, I, and I, I haven't really used a lot of these other functions. I still don't know what this, these little things sort of do, uh, these little magnet guys. So I haven't gotten into it too much. But yeah, I see this as a, as a, as a crucial tool now. I think it's, um, it's just so simple and so fast. So look, if I opened up the, um, the, the post one, say, so that's the, the original form. And let's say, you know, just 2000. And it should do a, a reasonable job straight away. Um, you know, it's, there's not that much of a curvature to the object. And then we can solve it. So that's great. So. And this is a fairly automatic kind of process. Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I had a sort of quick look through this, but it, you know, didn't make too much sense to me. Um, so it's a sick graph thing. So I guess these guys are scientists, you know. Um, yeah, let's hang on here for a second. So that way the, let's hang on there so people can type in the URL um, up there. Okay, cool. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, tell, tell us more yeah. about this. So instant meshes. And so, yeah, I found a few videos. Um, not sort of too much. It doesn't go into that much detail. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not really quite sure. I haven't really spent too much time um, with it. It seems to just work off the bat, you know. But, you know, as I said before, we had to um, really go in and spend a lot of time in Blender to sort of tweak it out. So you can see we're losing all the detail now uh, of the, um, of these sort of small parts. I still don't know how to zoom in. <laughs> if anyone knows how to zoom in, I I'd appreciate knowing that. It just, just doesn't quite want to get there. Um, yeah, so and I'm, I'm concerned about this section up here. I really don't know what's going to go on there. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll see. But yeah, certainly I want to spend a lot more time. This would be a, a really good addition to um, the, the Blender pipeline, I've got to say. Because it's just so quick, so fast. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's really, really cool. Um, and this mm -hmm. idea of being able to paint the topology is uh, it's just beautiful. <laughs> it's a really novel way to, to, to think about it. And elegant, I would say. Cool, and that writes out like an OBJ, FBX, what, what yep. formats can we do? Yep, I think it wants to do it in this uh, PLY. I, I'm not sure, I don't ever use that one. I'll just use OBJ for everything. Um, but yeah, it exports it as whatever you want it to be. And save it as yeah, PLY or OBJ. So cool. yeah, beautiful, 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 and it, it's just really simple. So, yeah, that's, okay. that's, been, that's been a really nice find, I would say. Well, I uh, I think we're good, Andrew or Chris or uh, Jeremy, James. I don't know if you guys have any questions for Chris, um, but this has been awesome, man. Seriously, it would, what a great way to start off World Blender Meetup Day. <laughs> it's a bit scary. It's not really not getting there yet, but yeah, there's some pretty nice people uh, going uh, presenting later on. That's going to be quite exciting to see. Um, yeah, no, th this is really awesome though, and, and I'm glad you talked about photogrammetry and add a little bit of substance in there too. A, uh, it, for our part, um, we've noticed that Blender's starting to play really well with other software, and that's that's what makes it so powerful. That yeah, you can combine uh, everything. Yeah, and, and I see that the substance is really becoming. I mean, I teach at a university in, in Brisbane, uh, in Australia, and um, substance has become quite a large part of what where we're heading because it's um, it's just it, it's changed the workflow, and I I couldn't imagine doing it without this now this this total PBR system. Getting it back in Blender was a little bit strange, but you know, it, it was okay. Um, and I can't wait for the PBR viewport to come in. That's gonna be um, the next sort of step. We use a lot of um, uh, Sketchfab now with just the, the PBR lighting, substance, et cetera. It's, um, it's really cool. Awesome. Oscar from Seattle says, great work. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. I'll show you my beautiful, I'm very proud of my render. It's the first render of this Yeah, project. let's see it. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's getting there. Slowly, slowly getting there. Uh, and then, yeah, fix up these little sort of weirdness of the, of the meshes and paint over those little seams. But that is good. It's cool. And yeah, really start to work on the, um, the subsurface scattering with the translucency, et cetera, and putting those really crazy shaman colors into him uh, and so that he'll get there. And the eyes as well. We'll work on the eyes. But, but he's funky. A funky shaman crab. Awesome. Well, Chris, uh, with that, I want to thank you for having a, a great presentation and showing off some <laughs> super cool stuff, man. Thanks for thanks for showing all of this. All right.
It's good to be first off the rank. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> no pressure. Well done. Well done.